and hello, hello, hello again. Welcome back to the stream. It's your host, Marley Startled, and today we're going to be taking a look at um, wall walls or roach builds. So as the DLC has come out, people are still trying different metas, etc, etc. I thought I would demonstrate a, a roach build for, for the Soviet Union and the benefits and cons of a roach build. So here is my boys getting ready. They're going to stop training now. Uh, I'm just going to stop their training so they get that digging penalty. Uh, also, they don't get a dig into uh, the uh, so they can get their entrenchment, and then we will explain it. So, what is a roach build? A roach build is effectively slowing down or reducing the ability of the enemy to advance, uh, not by winning the battles pound for pound using combat, but using defensive penalties and defensive bonuses to wear out the enemy via organization. The benefits of this is, of course, it can be. You can make a lot of units using cheap production and for all intensive purposes um, you can uh, it's very, it's less micro intensive compared to the mobile warfare of armor and tanks you will normally see this say in china and occasionally in the soviet union but perhaps even more in the soviet union now that uh, the meta has somewhat changed with a new expansion uh yep so the aim is really to slow down the advance by stacking bonuses defensively and generally retarding any movement uh, by the enemy and making the enemy pay pound for pound. Um, this is done by using some sort of exploiting slash uh, optimizing certain mechanics in the game um, and how battles are fought. So if you take a look at this division, well, I'm going to explain it now boys and girls, you can see that normally division's health is split between HP and organization. Now HP tends to be the health of the unit and if it loses it, normally the unit gets deleted. But how often do you see a unit get destroyed? Very rarely. Really, what wins or loses the battle or leads to units being pushed up the tile is organization. When a unit is in combat, it will get organization penalties uh, and it will start to lose organization. But however long it's in combat or how much damage it's taken. After it loses enough organization, it is pushed off the tile or it is pushed off the battle and a new unit can uh, re-enter the battle. Um... So how the org wall exploits or takes advantage of this is by putting a lots and lots of troops on one tile or behind trial and stacking penalties and constantly adding new troops into the meat grinder, the, the organization keeps stays very high. And this means that the better units of the enemy, although they may have higher soft attack and better hard attack and perhaps even better breakthrough, they will run out of organization quicker than your own units, meaning that although they would technically win the battle, uh, if, if they could stay in it for longer, because they can't because of the slash org wall, they um, they effectively stop fighting and then they have to reorganize to attack. This means that often you will see a lot of red in, in the battles, but if you just keep on adding units in an org wall, they will um, eventually, uh, eventually turn green and the battle will stop. So... Uh, this is often used in China, and that's why 10 whips are normally allowed for China, but banned in other nations because of this org walling. But it, a lot of people would be asking right now, like, well, what's stopping people just doing this all the time? And the reason why a lot of this stops a lot, uh, people don't do this a lot, is because of another factor called reinforce rate. So what is reinforce rate? It is the potential for a unit or a, 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 a card or a brigade well, or a division to reinforce a battle. So let's say, let's take a look at this pile here. It has a combat whip of 90. So I can get, say, 9 10 whips in. Now, once the battle starts and I lose one 10 whip, it gets completely deorganized de uh, de and gets kicked off the tile, you have a chance for the other units in reserve, so if to say like there's 10 units on this tile, to join the battle, depending on the reinforce rate. This means that it stops people just org walling and doing org walls a la World War One because if the enemy can kill enough units quick enough or if the, the reinforcing units don't join because of the low reinforce rate or just because of bad luck, then they will take the tile. This becomes... Uh, so this means that eventually units will... Eventually a good or well-equipped army will push a org wall or a roach build off a tile but they will potentially be very disorganized and it will take them a very long time to do so let's say for example these guys who are let's pretend they're very well equipped and well organized attack this tile 
because he's of all got sub defense, oh, sub eventually will have all defensive bonuses. It will take him a lot while to break through. Meanwhile, their organization is decreasing. This guy gets knocked off. I just send another guy in, and they potentially reinforce the battle, keeping it going. So I keep on churning out more troops into this meat grinder, whereas their better troops slowly lose our organization. This means that the only so once you get to a certain level in Hoi Four, you've got to understand how an enemy would react to an org wall. And so the best way to counteract an org wall is by stacking as much soft attack, uh, breakthrough, and org as possible to kill the units before you get the org yourself. Let's say for this tank. If this tank was to attack this org wall, I could just keep feeding it all day, especially if there's only 30 organization. However, if it's got lots of um lots of artillery or self-propelled guns, or if it's got cast. It could potentially do enough damage to push me off this tile, especially if it's got like a navy there or something to that effect. And that means that eventually that you can break through a roach build. However, this is when other problems come into play. The first problem is a new supply system. You could try and break through a roach build and uh, not get anywhere near the next supply hub, meaning that you're under supply, less equipped, and you're going to struggle to break through any, any, even further. Um, Second, it's also the psychological factor. A lot of new players, uh, especially new Germanys or new Japans who aren't used to seeing Roach builds, they'll think they'll have very good units, they'll think they'll have, don't have done everything right. They'll attack once with their best units and fail the attack and then they'll start being very demoralized because they think, well, I can't kill these crappy units, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, I'm, um, fuck, uh, I'll, just, I'll just rage quit. And that means that, of course, really, a more experienced player will realise that eventually they can break through an org wall. It just takes time. However, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to do a lot of damage to infrastructure. And because of the new supply mechanic, if they're not pushing in the right tiles, they could push into places with very low supply. So when should you really do an org wall? Primarily, org walls are for uh, desperate uh, situations, for example, as China, where you don't have the industry to build anything else, so you just build lots of garbage units and use the org defenses. Uh, it can also be used as a sort of a middle finger to in meme games, uh, where you know you're in a stacked game, uh, you know you're going to be attacked, uh, and so you're just going to spike the enemy team by making lots and lots of divisions and slowing down their, their, their epic gross Germaniums or gross Hungarians. <laughs> Uh, in which case you'll probably get kicked or banned uh, because, because those people are just uh, the definition of awful. Or it could be for buying time, and this is where it can be good for the Soviet Union. So, if this will take a very long time for these guys to push me off these tiles, and so by the time they can get anywhere near Moscow, it may be two years, perhaps a year and a half, um, and because of that, that means it gives me time and the Allies time to land, lease, give me planes, give me fighters, give me tanks. Uh, it gives me time to change my industry up. Um, and um, also the damage being done to the infrastructure and the rail lines via partisans will slowly start to starve the enemy, allowing for the comeback. It is a good buy, uh, time by a strat and it is very good for slowing down advances and avoiding mass encirclements. A lot of people won't build enough divisions. And once they lose their first 100 divisions, the game's already lost. Because if, let's imagine I only had one line here. If these guys broke through, they could just encircle this, all these troops and wipe it out. But because I'm doing a roach build and I'm doing defense in depth, a Germany player who can break through here won't be able to will then have to fight even more defended units, then have to fight even more defended units, and then by the time they can actually get to the end of this roach wall to encircle me, I've already moved troops out or counterattacked. It's also a good psychological weapon against experienced German players because you have to understand in this game that there's a lot of people who are very mini maxi who expect A and A to happen resulting in B and if they don't achieve a certain success point they'll often rage quit or leave. Um, the amount of times I've seen a, a German player just not be able to break the standard line and just leave the game uh, basically ruining the game for five well, for, for the other for the, for the Soviet player or for the allies who are waiting for a D-Day is ridiculous. What you're effectively doing is you're subverting their expectations of what uh, the Soviet, what the so, uh, West of Eastern Front's going to be like and you've effectively said you may win this but it's going to take you another three or four hours to do so and at which case 
um, a lot of uh, German players may not bother or the Allies may get, give up. Uh, and it's just a game of attrition. It's a very psychological multiplayer game. It's about who is going to outlast who in these four or five hour matches. <laughs> and so you can slow down the, 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 the whole battle, make them really pay for every tile and potentially almost get a, a victory by um, by apathy by the Germany player because if they don't get what they're expecting which is of course a tank rush or a tank battle or they don't achieve the standard line within a certain date they'll often assume the worst and they'll go okay it's, uh, I can't be bothered to do NC my meta's fucked I'm going to leave the game and screw everyone over and so that's also that sort of, of mentality remember you're dealing in multiplayer games these, a lot of players will do a large amount of micro or, or, um, or optimization for their builds and as soon as their build goes wrong or the build doesn't go the way they had planned they will just leave and a good roach build is a way of subverting that and effectively saying that you may want to achieve victory in 1942 but you're not going to get it till 1944 let's hope your build is going to last that long there are of course issues with roach builds one of the issues with a roach build is it has no pressure one of the important things about this sort of multiplayer games is the ability for the Soviets to put pressure on the Germans to allow D-Days to occur. Now, when you're in the Roach phase, you're completely defensive. Your units are weaker, crapper, and generally less, less, less useful. However, with the defensive bonuses, the org bonuses for certain doctrines, you can, um, you can still win most battles or at least slow down the advances. Uh, however, you can't really counterattack. And that's the big issue of roach builds. There's no pressure. And so if I was to do a roach build and I didn't transition to a different build, if the Allies tried to naval invade or try to do a D-Day, uh, the Germans could just send all their tanks over here, then come back because I put no pressure on them. And so really roach builds are either temporary or because you've got no, you've got a strong allies who's going to basically win it single-handed and you're just buying time for them, or they're or um, waiting to transition to a different build. So I'm here to demonstrate my Roach build for you. As you can see, I've got 100, 200, 300, about 400 divisions uh, ready to go. And here are their designs. So you can see I've smacked entrenchment up to nine entrenchment of 20 whips, uh, garbage soft attack, garbage hard attack, garbage breakthrough, but okay defense and with all these buffs as well with the AA and the soft artillery they will hopefully inflict some damage on the enemy air. I've also done an anti-tank build. I, won't get, I didn't get many out. I think I only got 40 or 50 divisions of these out. However, this is for piercing and once you get to 90, uh, of late 1941, once you get to the higher piercing values, you're going to get to about 100 uh, piercing, which means that you're going to do a lot of hard attack or at least slow down armor pushes. I've done no air because oh, this is under the assumption that you're going to get a air investment by the allies uh, and no armor at this stage. Although I have started building my armor templates, actually I haven't yet. Um, once I have built my armor templates, which I'm going to do once I've got the advanced high velocity cannon, um, I would have to switch. But the idea is that you're going to hold for so long that you're going to have time to be able to switch. Equally, this is probably the highest civ count I've had in all my games so far as a Soviet Union because I've changed my focuses, uh, my focus priorities. So if we just look at this focus over here, this is a bit of a quick focus to five, uh, the third five year plan. If you rush this first, you're going to get, um, you're going to get consumer goods plus 5%, which is not good. And uh, the big thing, what's limiting your developments in your industry as the, uh, as the Soviet Union is the amount of consumer goods that are in your um, that you're having to spend um, divs on, which you which you have to get around. So what I did instead is once I'd gone down the path of Marxism, I then went down, expand the adjective pro prop, built railways until I could get most of my supply done. Then I went down, finished the purges. Uh, when there was gaps in the purges, when I needed time to kill, I researched heavy industry and infrastructure effort, and then the first five-year plan. And then I began researching, uh, finished off the purge tree as much as I could, and then rushed down to this re research slot. At this stage, I did not invest in the third five-year plan. I rushed down to this research slot, and then I went over here, down to 
A new Soviet woman. Collectivist propaganda. South socialist emulism. And socialist realism. Because this gave me minus 2% consumer goods. This also gave me more stability. So more stability means less consumer goods as well. And I also made sure to get the... Uh, Gosproyski, which gave me minus 5% consumer goods as well. So already I've got minus 5, 6, 7, minus 8, minus about minus 9% on the consumer goods demands. After that, uh, I went down here to get rid of Leningrad, got, went, uh, to get the next research slot, got rent down here to get to, uh, to get move industry to new rules, and then eventually I went down to third five year plan, shift armaments, and optimize production lines, but not only, not until after I had finished all of this off got to about here and then i've moved over to finish this off and then i as a last second i switched over to strengthen the mobilization plan and eventually got to military organization which i'm about to finish now this meant that i had a lot more consumer goods to play with especially by picking the focuses like we want to accomplish a high yield meaning that i could get five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, almost like minus almost a 12% uh, consumer goods reduction cost in cost. And that meant I could build a lot more a lot quicker. It also meant that I did a sort of late 1938 mill shift. So around August, October time 1938, I began switching to mills. I also researched, instead of doing the sort of roach build, instead of doing dispersed industry, I went down to concentrated industry. And that meant I could build a lot more mills in the high infrastructure areas like Moscow, Leningrad, um, Kharkov, and so on. This meant, of course, I could build more mills more quickly, and that meant I could get my numbers up a lot quicker. And bear in mind, in a multiplayer game, we're probably going to get to about 300 factories with all those boosting and sieve boosts and things like that. Equally, because of the Roach build, and because I was doing concentrated industry and the buffs to production i was throwing out these guns like 500 guns a day it was ridiculous uh 41 soft equi uh, equipment code artillery 31 a day i was vomiting that stuff out but here's the interesting thing if you switch production from if it's got to a new infantry equipment you will get massive penalties to your production or uh, efficiency using the uh, concentrated industry so what you need to do is you need to um is you, is you need to make multiple lines of of um, of, we of equipment. So for example, instead of changing this to artillery two, which would devastate my uh, production efficiency, I went and started began researching improved artillery two as a separate industry line. Equally, once artillery three comes out, I will probably do the same for artillery three and so on and so forth. However, because of that concentrated industry, I could vomit out guns like. This will be gone in 231 days, but bear in mind I've got 101 divisions ready to go. So once I get rid, of that, get rid of these, bring them down to about a silky 50, this will be gone in 138 days and it's only going to get better from there. Bear in mind I've got almost like 500 divisions, so let's round up. That's 100, that's 100, that's 200, 300, 400, about 430 divisions all ready and ready to go. And although they've got garbage equipment, they are just going to hold a line because of the roach build. The sort of doctrines you want for roach build is either mass assault doctrine or, super, or, or grand battle plan. So the reason why I went down this side is simply because I was doing a meme. Really, you probably want to go down this way uh, if you're actually going to do a multiplayer game. But the reason why I went down here is just so I could get as much org and as much recovery rate and as much reinforce rate from my infantry as possible. To eventually get to guerrilla warfare where i could do massive damage to uh well i'd, I'd have no supply issues and i could do massive da damage to the uh enemy occupied states already over here i've already got plus 10 percent damage to enemy garrisons so if you're going to do a full roach, roach build and just meme it with infantry this is a good way just to slow down the enemy's advance however if you're really thinking i want to go tanks later on you can go down this way instead but this is the um the joys of the new doctrine is that you can now you're no longer soft locked so i can say get down to here think okay i can start fighting back now and then switch to deep battle and start going down here once i get my tanks out 
So now you're not really limited by which line you need to go down. The second good roach build is um, the Grand Battle Plan. Which will give you a entrenchment speed of 25% plus 10 entrenchment. And another plus 10 entrenchment over here somewhere, I believe. No, plus 10% defense. And of course, you can go down infiltra inf infiltration instead and just use infantry, infantry war that way. However, we're going to stay, stay with uh, mass assault doctrine because that was some meme. But primarily, this is a good way to go down and then you can switch to deep battle with the new doctrines or the new uh, way it's researched. I then went to victory or death to really increase the org drain. The organization lost when below 25% went to minus, uh, minus 15. And additional mass charge tactic chance if preferred tactic. I also went with elevated engineering core for the entrenchment speed. And then I picked my preferred tactic as mass assault. And the reason why is because the tactics combat width goes up by 50%, meaning that I can have four units in a, in a single fight. Although, theory, you probably should use, be using defense, like guerrilla tactics, but hey-ho. And of course, ele uh, elevated engineering course is pretty obvious. Then for my research, it was a hard research down to uh, artillery. One research on armor until I got to about here. Um, entrenchment's a very important one, so if you can rush entrenchment, that's great. Logistics is an important one. This is very important for reinforce rate. Um, and then, of course, pretty obvious down there. I also researched armored trains just to be on the safe side. But let's play it and see how it works out. So my guys are going to start building up their entrenchment now. You can see my mills are very high now. 300 mills now. Simply because of the concentrated industry and the consumer goods. So I would delay. I would definitely delay. The third five year plan. Until you've say got reduced to consumer goods and you want to start with mass producing um mass producing uh, production equipment still quite good to have but i would definitely delay it because that plus five percent consumer goods is devastating there you go i was a bit late to build up my entrenchment completely but now you're about to see a glories of a uh, of a roach build Another reason why a lot of, you may be wondering why I've only put how do I put it? I've put loads of units on different tiles, and the reason why is because you want to avoid that encirclement. So if you put, if I was to say put all those troops on the one front line, one I'm going to run out of supply, and two, if they break through that one line, they can quickly and quite easily move behind me and encircle me. But instead, a Jeremy player, if he breaks through, there's another defensive line with more defensive bonuses he has to break through. And then there's another one he's got to break through. And then there's another one he's got to break through. And so on and so forth. With all those defensive bonuses stacked up upon each other. Equally, these guys will fall back and then these guys can be assigned elsewhere to fill up more defensive lines. Or they can be used to reinforce and completely add more absolutely disgusting defensive entrenchment bonuses. So this is the hardest I've ever been. If I tag switch, so I've got 172 mils, 126 sieves. If I tag Germany, he's got 172, I'm 133. So he's just got slightly more than me. However, in a multiplayer game, you've got to assume that the Germany player would have been boosted him, uh, and that the um, and that the other Axis nations are also involved as well. And so really you're still rather badly outdone. So I've also made some anti-tank for piercing. However, I haven't put them in a good I haven't put them in their own individual army. What you probably should do is have your own individual piercing army and split them up uh, and use them as a quick reaction force. Alternatively, you can also uh, you can also uh, what was I gonna say? You can also just use them as a fallback line 
but really you probably should use your your piercing as a as a separate independent army. So there we are. So I'm gonna wait till I get desperate defense. I've got pretty high stability. The reason why you want pretty high stability is also reduce that consumer goods. You see that 23% is a number of my sieves right now, but that's because I've gone down that next focus. And if I, I could simply pop, we will accomplish a high, high yield. There you go, I've got 10 more sieves ready to go. Another good thing about the Roach build is that it starve the enemy as they got to push deep and deep into your land a lot of the infrastructure the railroads all that jazz will be broken meaning that um meaning that uh, they will have to slow down and repair equally with the new supply systems they can't just push around you know willy-nilly now they've got to push to a supply point push to another supply point so on and so forth just really dragging out those engagements So we've got a 40% defensive combat bonus. This, this is really disgusting. Um, and it'll just get even worse as, uh, as time goes on. Uh, the reason why I've deleted the fallback lines is because the AI will actually abandon their positions uh, or find counterattack and lose their entrenchment. So here we have our engagements. The battle started and then go down desperate defense. There we are, all desperate measures. And let's take a look at some of the battles. So with their infantry, they've got much more soft attack. They've got much, much more breakthrough. They've got, well, much more hard attack. They've got 113 breakthrough. Whereas I've got 573 defense per unit. Because of the experience, the entrenchment, and the command skills. This means that I can avoid a certain amount of damage they inflict and because I've got so many units I can add more units to this absolute slaughter if I need to and I will just out fight them because of my defensive bonuses. So it means that the only really way to overcome a roach build would be to, uh, to make some very high powered, high soft attack, high damaging units to, uh, to overcome the roach. But um, as you probably know, in most multiplayer games, infantry will normally just be line holders. And in consequence, not really that much of an issue uh, in against a roach build. Uh, the only thing you have to worry about is the armor. And because I've built anti-tank, um, I shouldn't have too many issues with it. So we're losing this battle. As you can see, the tank's in it. He's fighting away. They've got more troops to reinforce. But... We can game this now and start using the org out fight these units. We won't win the battle, but we can out fight them. So they pushed up after off this tile with their 17 divisions that's not the end of the world because they can't push anymore and we and now this tile is much more stronger because they've had to push this so this fight's continuing i can just keep feeding more troops in but see how they're running out of troops to get into the fight because of the, of the orb And what, how long is it taking them to take this tile? Two days, three days. And no matter how hard they push in, there's always more troops behind it.
There you go, pushed him off simply because he was too de-orbed. Let's see if I can do some damage to that tank. Yeah, piercing. Partially piercing. And that will get better once I've uh, added more units. So right now I could add another anti-tank unit like so to get up that 90. Or I could add another anti-tank like so. Remove this. Add that 97, but that's when you get start getting diminishing returns. It's not really worth it. I have no real issues of being encircled. Because of the amount of defense I have, or the amount of defense in depth. As soon as I get pushed back, I send more troops out. Add more troops to the next defensive line and just keep on churning them out. You can also strategically redeploy them because they won't be in a battle for a while. Not desperate measures now, so I can go up here, and as soon as I get pushed back, I can just do... Like, bear in mind, I'm not stacking any defensive penalties right now, and it is doing Operation Barbarossa. As soon as my troops get pushed back, and I know I'm going to win the fight, I relocate the troops elsewhere. Push some of these guys back so they can reinforce. Uh, now I'm going to go down the road of life as soon as I can. So let's do experts and camouflage while we wait. Start retreating our troops back out of his pocket. Start adding more factories. Let's accept these fellows to increase our numbers even more. And let's just keep going. It's the fifteenth of Org, and we're holding much better than uh, than we normally are and than we normally do. It's a bit micro-intensive, but because of how slow the battle is going, you don't have to weigh too much, if you know what I mean. And then we can pop our next research. Human wave offensive. This is where you could be worried about things like this. Fortunately, the uh, AI was a bit of a potato there. He didn't decide to push. Let's 
concede. I cannot do a breakthrough here. I can't do it. Not possible. And bear in mind, most multiplayer games, you're going to have people who are just going to focus entirely on tanks. And they're going to say their, their breakthrough is going to be even more limited. There you are. So I've already cracked out another 50, 40 divisions. We're now going to start researching uh, anti air. And we're going to make sure we can keep relocating our industry away from the front. Okay, now normally this would be done via free speed. And so of course you've got plenty of time to micro these units and not have to weigh in the slightest about this sort of thing. Make sure these guys are motorized. I'm actually running out of trains because of uh, how many units I have on the field. So that's a point to bear in mind. If you're going to do a roach build, you're going to need a lot more trains. Let's constantly shuffling troops down the line to make sure there's plenty of, uh, make sure there's no gaps because the dangers of a roach build is if they get a breakthrough, then you're in a world of hurt. So you're going to make sure that you're constantly microing Constantly going, getting that defense in depth, for slowly stacking those bonuses. More troops, more cannon fodder. And then the road of life. And start falling back to the Stalin line. Ever so slowly grinding them back. Now if we take a look at our equipment deficits. It's not bad. 101 deficit. Bear in mind we haven't reached maximum production capacity yet. And bear in mind how many units we have on the field. It's not that bad. So if I just uh, cut down on artillery a bit. And cut down on anti-air a bit. And then cut down on anti-tank a bit. Probably put us a little higher. We should be pretty good. And bear in mind it's because I've still got 49 divisions ready to go. Still no staggered defense, still no defensive bonuses yet. We haven't yet, we're not even doing that bad enough to get staggered defense yet. So the question is, when should we switch to our next production? I'm going to start switching my military uh, to my tank production once I've researched the uh, 76 mils. Start retreating those troops back. Start retreating these guys back. Let's slowly but surely start re slowing, reducing or retreating the troops. Now, let's do a tag switch to see the damage I've done to uh, the Germany. 
So they've still got plenty, plenty of equipment left. Still got 150k in the bank. But let's just take a look at the supply. 30 shite. And the amount of construction they're probably going to have to do as well to repair all of this is also pretty uh, pretty bad because they're going to have to repair all of this shit because I've been fighting on it. And we're not even in a position yet to do our bonuses for our defences. And we're throwing out even more troops into this. So let's form a new defensive line. At this stage, I couldn't care less. Just doing the one behind the Stalin line. But you can see, I can't put any pressure on them. They have to put pressure on me. And that's the thing. There's no ability for me to counterattack. However, in the current, well, current expansion, or no step back, I don't think there's any chance for the Soviets to counterattack anyway. Now this is a bit dangerous here. This is when you've got to pay a bit of attention. You see, the, the enemy is one tile away from breakthrough here. And so we need to start making sure we've got troops or units behind it in case any armor does decide to try and do a cheeky breakthrough. Because you, you cannot afford to allow big, big old breakthroughs to occur. Any new troops we're going to start just strategically redeploying over there. And we're going to start retreating these units back. There we are. And you can see here, we've got too many troops on this tile. Not the end of the world, but still something you've got to pay attention to. Enemy armor there. So the, the only thing that really will break through is armor. Well, that's why we've got our anti-tank. Start retreating all this back. Because they are beginning to be to break through, but it's so slow. It's already October and they haven't really even got to the Stalin line yet. But they got to the stand line in the north, but it doesn't matter because of the amount of troops I have in these sectors. And although I have got some slight weapon deficits, it's not that bad. Some big deficits here, but I'm making 59 a day, so it shouldn't be too bad. And plus, you could just get land lease from the, uh, from the Americans as well. You've got to bear that in mind. The Americans are land leasing you with shit as well doing this.
Uh, now we're just doing a Dap Blarney. Make sure we treat these guys back. Focus on reinforcements first. Uh, what should we do next? Let's do this. Hopefully you'd have also the allies doing like partisan missions and all that sort of jazz as well. I always like to have some troops in reserve just in case I do get reinforced memed. I'm trying to push with their tanks over rivers, that's not going to work. Oh my guys can pierce whatever they've got. And because I've got guys in reserve I can immediately start feeding them in. There's the American land lease. Start feeding these up the line. Using strategic redeploy. Now this is what you'd have to be wary about if uh, the enemy tried to push in that sector. Forty-two days, and we should be able to be, be able to pierce most tanks in multiplayer, unless it's a heavy tank. Mean. So the roach build makes it very difficult for mass encirclement. They really have to break through a lot of tiles very quickly to uh, to achieve it. Because I was paying attention to the south, they were able to uh, break through here. Now they got to fight across the river. Enjoy. Damn it, reinforced memed. Not the end of the world, it's just a bit tedious. So this is where you panic a little bit. And you start creating a front line. To start spreading your units out a bit. Equally, I could probably start upgrading my units now. Get these guys back.
But now it's the 16th of November. Let's take a look at the casualties. 1.2 million, 1.13 million. Once again, let's tag to the Germans. Take a look at their supply lines. Not bad, not bad, but um, it'll be the construction. Like, look, there over supply, there over supply there. Um, and their construction will be in complete array. So they're getting bombed a lot, bombed a lot, and then the rest is all over here. And they're not even in the bad places yet. And I have yet to be able to use any of my bonuses, like Staggered Retreat, any of that jazz. Still, the gun deficit's a bit of a nuisance. But the shortage is going to end in 82 days. And I think I'm going to dump the last batch of infantry. Of course, I can no longer afford any more. There's a second AA. So here's a problem what's with um, heavy production. You go to uh, concentrated industry. You make loads of basic equipment, but as soon as you switch, Look at that damage. So you do have to sort of stag your industry a little bit. In any case, let's keep building up. I'm actually running out of place with places to build, if I'm honest. Eighteen days, and I can pierce most tanks. Let's take one infantry line off and make a second fallback line over here because we've got the time to do it. And like normally, where well, you don't have the time to do it because of uh, the glories of uh, a barb. But Barb should be ending now, so all their attack bonuses should be failing. Their tank's getting pierced. These guys will now fall back with their 89 divisions to make us another fallback line. Uh, the rest can hold the front. Start falling these guys back. We can now go to the next bonus, which is Cooper population 5% and reinforce rate plus 15%, meaning that. Our guys will constantly join the battle even more. Here's our anti-tank three. What does that mean for us? It means we can now pierce up to 110 if we added a anti-tank support gun, 113, and if we were feeling particularly devilish. Having a 19. Of course, our all could be pretty bad, but that's not the end of the world because, again, it's us all about that hard attack and that piercing. So, what does that mean? I should be able to pierce most tanks, with the exception being heavy tanks, but because heavy tanks are so expensive, probably won't see many heavy tanks in production. But again, if you want to get around anti tank, then heavy tanks. But, um, if you want to get around that anti tank, then uh, heavy tank is the place to go. So can we do staggered defense yet? 
Nope. But we can relocate our industry, which we will do now. And we'll retreat these troops even further back. So, have we got our... Yes, we do. So let's begin the production of our next anti-tank weapon. So, we've got our anti-tank now. Let's call it a tank destroyer. Oh, well, it's not yet. Let's go to our heavy armaments, advanced high velocity, special modules, wet ammo storage, special modules, sloped armor, and special modules, breeze ball adapter for that maximum piercing. We're going to go welded armor, the portion bar for more reliability. Our diesel engine for, you guessed it, more reliability. And then we're going to armor this up the arse. So we have an armor of 160, but that's not even near ready yet. Of course, we need to wait because uh, <laughs> I haven't got enough XP, but eventually we will. There's our adaptable army. We can now do whatever we like. Uh, we can go down PCS armament for even more defense. And our guns are finally back online, which is great, especially because that American land lease. So it's 1942. Even with the barb, they didn't even get to most parts of their line, didn't get to the Stalin line. And now they have to break through this massive wall of 100, 200, 300, 400 divisions. With more coming out every day. this stage we're probably putting out too many divisions because of how expensive this all is. And I'm just waiting. There we are. Here's what we need. Division org plus five. Supply plus. Supply grace plus. Why not do supply, uh, supply consumption minus 10% as well? Why not? My guys don't even have, apart from over here, most of my guys don't even have supply problems. Take a look at the casualties, 1.9, 1.7 million. So this is what an org wall for is for buying time until um, your land lease and resupply or um, more troops can come or you can get your production to overdrive to begin uh, counter offensives. Like I am just running out of places to build now. I'm on 304 mils and I don't know what to do with them. I mainly just reinforce. And then they're going to get deorg before they can finish off the fight. I literally have. I don't know what else to spend on. Um, I'm just waiting until I get enough. There we are. Now I can build my tanks. Although, 
Should I really bother? I've only got 262 days until I can build a heavy tank chassis. Yeah, I'm going to bother. So, um... Once again, auto-equip. Heavy armaments, advanced high velocity, make sure it's a tank destroyer. Auto-upgrade. Give it a heavy turret type. Three-man turret. Keep it at radio as it is. Go for sloped armor. Squeeze board adapter and hot autoloader is not really worth it. It's the wet ammo storage for that reliability. Portion bore for reliability. Fast armor for that extra armor. Is it really worth it? Probably not. Let's do welded armor. Diesel engine. Ammo, well, ammunition, you know what, fast armor. Fine, it's too expensive. There we are. Save that template. This is now the list of things to upgrade. We can now put things off of our ammunition and our guns. And begin trading at tungsten. With that done, we can now also upgrade our units. We also upgrade our guns, but you can see our gun deficit's pretty big now, so we're not going to bother until we've got some spare guns in the bank. So instead, we're going to go to our armor. Heavy tank destroyer, heavy tank destroyer, heavy tank destroyer. Engineering company, support anti air. Um. Save that for now, and then we'll add more to it later. Moved artillery upgrade. Start upgrading artillery free. Get these units back. These guys can form the next defensive line behind the Stalin line, so over here. And we can begin researching. I don't know what to research now. Let's do the Patriarch. And that is the joys of a Roach build. Eventually this will kick into overdrive and we'll be making a lot a day. That will be our main staple tank. But for now, we just got to sit back and, uh, and wait. So once the initial barb is over, it, it's pretty... Uh, you can just go get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, start upgrading your uh, your units. So let's go offensive doctrine, um, organization. Let's do charismatic. Start upgrading everything. So let's do ambusher for the extra entrenchment. And you can just have a jolly good time. Get more guns from the Allies. May as well switch to the next tank to production because we can. All about that entrenchment, boys. But there's a very strong psychological factor to a uh, to a roach build. Uh, new players are just going to be completely terrified of it. They won't know what to do. Um, they won't realise that it's just about constantly attacking and eventually you will break through. Um, and even experienced players will gnash their teeth because they've got to break through it. And it's just going to be awful, the whole experience. 
especially a good against a good Roach Micro, um, who can make sure there's no lines opened up. Go down war economy now for those extra mills. Got more boys to add to the meat grinder. We're gonna make sure to upgrade our tanks to make sure they are workable. Make sure we've got some mobile warfare, motorized anti uh, motorized anti air. Motorized anti air, motorized anti air, or motorized anti air. We're going to do 40 whips, even though they're not going to be the most optimum. Logistics, um, support artillery, and let's do motorized recon. Not very good org, okay armor. Let's get rid of one of these, get rid of one of these, and very slow, but that's why you're going to build these and your exploitation unit as well. And you're going to switch to a new, uh, a new doctrine after. So new doctrine. I could probably start switching now, but we'll, we'll switch uh, after. So we're going to do motorized artillery, motorized artillery, motorized artillery, motorized artillery. A load of motorized artillery, motorized anti air. There we are, and then we can go down engineering company, logistics company, and then save. That'll be us. They can start training these guys up. Uh, start training our tanks up as well. Get out about five tanks. Get out about. Oh, am I running out of uh, motorized? I am. I am. I am. I am. Let's start cracking out more motorized. Yeah. Make sure we've got some motorized in the bank because I don't want to waste them. And yeah. More infantry cannon fodder. And you're going to see how the Roach build can become this disgusting mess of troops. Like, I'm not even... I'm not even in the slightest concerned. They're going to have to push every tile from here to Moscow. I have even the remotest chance of breaking through, and I haven't even got the staggered retreat yet. Grand Patriarch? Oh, nope, apparently not. Whoa, I should have a Grand Patriarch. Where is he? Where is that fella? There he is. Look, division recovery rate plus 10% even more. Wow. I can fly speed it now. It's not even remotely worrying. Let's begin upgrading your units, making sure they're constantly getting uh, buffs and bonuses. Ah, oh, I should have done organisation first. That extra reinforce rate. There you are. And now we can wait. So if we take a look, 
3.3k deficit everything else is enough with 400 500 divisions to spare uh we can research whatever has to do development of tanko grad 300 divisions no concerns let's just relocate this to be on the safe side and this side and that is the joys of a roach build Let's stop, let's tag switch Germany, and let's see how their garrisons are doing. Let's take a look at the resistance. 27, 43, 43, 49, 25, 24. Garrison penetration chance plus 50%. Their manpower is at 1.56 million. They are now out of guns using this sort of focus. And it's only going to get worse to the point where uh, they're going to be completely gone. And just imagine this in a multiplayer game. Like, sure, they may have some very powerful tanks trying to punch through, but if they can't get to that 1941 armor, they ain't going to do shite. They ain't going to be able to break through. Or that 1941 heavy armor, they aren't going to be able to break through. Plus, with the anti-tank guns, you're just wearing away their equipment, their supplies. They just do not have what they need to break through anymore. And sure, they've got air superiority, but it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just shooting the planes down. And of course, you could argue, well, what about logic striking? And of course, logic striking is an extremely important factor. However, the big issue of logic strikes is uh, if you're going to get land leased by the uh, allies, you can probably counteract that equally. You could probably still do a fighter two build, just making like 10 or 20 factories on fighter twos just to, uh, just to keep them at bay. But yeah, concentrated industry is really nice. That's just because of a lack of trade there. 4.53 a day. I can now upgrade this to my next infantry equipment. Turn out even more infantry. And let's chill. Any new troops we add, we can add. We can just uh, add them to the to the gang. Take a look of casualties. Win ratio eighty eight percent. Equipment lost fifty eight thousand to combat, twelve thousand to attrition, one hundred seventy one thousand. Infantry equipment lost. They've lost 1,400 uh, medium tanks. That's just one army. Now if I tag the Germans again, take a look at their uh, their win rate. Apparently they have a win rate of 100%. percent Oh, that won't work. Okay. Okay. But I, I don't believe that. In any case, we can now begin researching whatever we like. Probably start researching excavation. Why not? This is a bit of a lazy roach now. What I should be doing is relocating lines, deleting fallback lines, just deleting every line possible and uh, getting to re, uh, re adding more de defense in depth. So I'd start moving troops over here, start moving troops over here, start moving troops over here. Okay, Tanko Garad developed. Uh, let's do Lessons of War. I don't even need to rush Lessons of War now because that's how disgusting this is. Yep, 
you may lose this in an enemy game, but the amount of pain you inflict on the enemy, on the uh, on the opposing players, will be worth it. Let's do our final doctrine. And that will give us non-combat out supply penalties minus 30% and resistance growth speed in our states occupied the enemy plus 25. And we're gonna, just going to wait until we've got our tanks together and we've got enough PP or XP and then we're going to switch to the other doctrine. Now we just chill. Keep shifting people over to stack those defensive uh, bonuses, making sure that if, if they do cross the river, they, they can't do anything else. I think I need you to tell me what to do, old boy. There we are. There we are. And the next build, uh, add this to this fellow. Oh no, they're breaking through. Oh no, they're not anymore. How many tanks am I producing a day? 7.39. And that isn't even my final form. How's the piercing on these tanks? I'm a 94, so they're going to pierce most armor. We can start going down organization to partisans. And I can just stack that, and it's just going to be disgusting. So a good player would uh, spot that and exploit it, but while well, you've got defense in depth. Let's increase our factory output, why not? Making 25 anti-tank freeze a day. So I think I could add an even another anti-tank. I'm backed up to 83. My org is at 26. That's probably something I shouldn't be doing. That's my motorized. Um, let's add motorized infantry to whacked up to 30. Port artillery, support anti air, save. How's my trucks? Bucks at 7.6k. Now we can wait. And then look at my armor. Only 22 org, which is pretty bad. So I probably would go for 40 whip for this. Even though 40 whip is no longer the standard meta. So that piercing. 179 piercing, that will pierce most 
tanks, and Yarm is 76, so that's pretty good. Then for my anti tank infantry, an org of 32, hard attack of 256, and a piercing of 111. Which I could increase even more if I so desired. Although it would become a bit more, a bit too expensive because you do get diminishing returns after a certain point using that. So I think I'll be able to pierce pretty much everything doing that. Anyway, now we're ready for our next tank. Heavy armaments, advanced high velocity cannon, three man turrets, sloped armor, special modules, wet ammunition storage, squeeze bore adapter for that piercing. Keep that. Uh, have this as cast armor. Yeah, may as well. It's the last. It's the last. It last gasp before dying. Back the armor out as high as it will go. And it's too expensive by how many? One point. Literally too expensive by one point. There we are. That's our next tank, anti tank chassis. I believe it's called. That's. That's supposed to be a tank destroyer. There we are. Very expensive. But well worth it. They're very expensive. I've actually ran out of uh, ran out of consumer goods. I could go to total mobe if I wanted. Let's go total mobe. I assume in most multiplayer games they'll allow total mode now as the Soviets. Okay, there's our tank squadrons all ready to go. Let's take a look at our tank squadrons. 32 organization, 107 armor, 558 breakthrough. Not the best, but they've got the piercing to pierce most tanks. And um, it's just the price you have to pay if you're going to go down the meme doctrine. So, because they've stopped attacking, I think it's now time to upgrade our supply depots. start cancelling all our production because we pretty much ran out of uh <laughs> we're pretty much overdoing it on our production now which is disgusting we're actually running out of uh running out of stuff so now if we do organize the partisans we can do death to the invaders which adds resistance to the tactics <laughs> adds resistance to target makes things even worse for them and glory to the partisan heroes but that's really for more bonuses on uh on that shelves, what do you call it? Um, missions. I'll we'll do this one for a change. I'm. I don't need any more units. I don't need any more units. Stop. Mm. 
No more units, please. Equally, I've got... I'm the 42 days to make an awful lot of anti-tanks, but still, it's extremely good. The Roach build, I feel like the Roach build is very good for buying time as the Soviets. But it is disgusting. How, how many divisions is that? I don't even know. Bear in mind that most, most German players, or Germany players, they will often have garbage infantry just so they can stack more into tanks. So you're not going to get these massive pushes on one part of the front. You're going to get like a small push on that front, which you can org war with your anti-tank. And then they've got to push the supply to hubs, and if they push to encircle, you can counterattack because they uh, they ran out of fuel. Yes, very potent, very potent. I'm just, I'm just running out of stuff to research now. So did we get to the bottom of this doctrine? We did. What does guerrilla tactics actually do? Let's take a look. At this combat width, minus 50%. Attacker damage, defender... Wow. <laughs> wow, that's a potent boy. I think mass attack is better though. So we, we could start switching, but instead we're going to keep on going down mass mobilization because I just want to see how potent the uh, resistance damage is. So we'll wait until Death to the Invaders is finished and then we'll tag switch and then hopefully we'll begin some counter offensives. However, you have noticed I have not attacked once, whether counter-attacking or anything like that, because you cannot apply pressure with roach builds. That's why you've got to turn them into something else, which now it's easier to do, because you can switch doctrines halfway, as opposed to being soft-locked by a time limit. They, they can't do anything. Maybe a player could do something with their tanks, but they can't do anything. I'll take a look at some of the stats now. Entrenchment 9. Soft attack coming to 35. Hard attack 26. Piercing 41. Pretty potent that. Um, air attack 35. Not bad. Altogether not too shabby. But really, you don't really you can't tell because the generals also give you entrenchment bonuses. Look at that. It receives a 50% defensive combat bonus. That's not even using Grand Battle Plan, which in itself is an extremely good defensive tool, often used by the French, because you haven't got room, you haven't got land to give up. How much? <laughs> Producing five heavy tanks a day. What's my deficit like? 66 days. Let's see how long it takes for this bad boy to run out. 120 days, eh? Well, in 120 days we'll begin Operation... <laughs> Operation uh, Bag Ration. We'll call it Bag Ration. Because that should also mean I've got all my, uh, all my smirch in that. Can't even do. All... It's not fair. I need order two two seven so I can do the offensive operations. So you actually need to lose ground to be able to do this shit. That's really unfair. Like imagine this with order two two seven. That good retreats. So that's already thirty percent bonus to, to defense with the entrenchment, which is an extra fifty percent to defense. Division organization plus five, supply plus seventy. Then Moscow, which will just like stop any Moscow offensive, and all this shit. Like he can't break this. Like a roach build is is disgusting. It it just be suffering for everyone involved. 
<laughs> Germany will probably just quit. <laughs> Eighty-nine days. What's my tank deficit like? Twenty-five days. I am producing seven a day, and then of course you'd have the American land lease and the American air land lease. Yeah. Upgrade all of this. Here's our next batch of tanks. Uh, give a new commander, um, anyone. Yes, someone who preferably hasn't been cowled by Stalin, but uh, you know, aggressive assaulter, defensive doctrine. Organization first. Zukov, you're getting the new stuff. Ah, oh, no, Zukov, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, that's disgusting. That is disgusting. That means I can, like, put so many more cannons or, or more guns there. That plus, that minus 50% is, is dropping. And as we're going to put everyone on the front line now. See what happens. Just imagine this if you were Germany, you just saw this stacked up against you. Uh, let's do last drop of blood for more supply. I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to do any of this. Let's do war bonds. Now we wait. So how many days? 42 days. And then all the tanks will be ready to go. Earth is done. Can I do my operations? No, I can't do my operations because I didn't lose that badly. Uh, let's do barrier troops for even more org regain. So 35 days is when I'll begin my operation. Let's take a look at our tank org. 40 whip, 32 org, not bad because remember that that mass assault reduces my combat whip by 50%. So I've got some supply issues here. Not too much, but some. And everywhere else is, is green. Or orange. Okay. 
My garrisons. Okay, next research. Um, am I still making motorized? No, I'm not. Let's make some more motorized. And now I'm producing 8.64 of the heaviest tanks per day. I've got so much ammunition. I've got pretty much everything I need. Disgusting. It's it's disgusting. Concentrated industry rush is disgusting. Vote build early on is disgusting. So, is this done yet? Three days, and then we will do our offensives and see what the, uh, the Germans partisan issues are like. So, let's tag Germany. So, using all the stacked bonuses, it's not that bad. 31% there. 25% there, it's actually not that bad. 30% there. 46% over here. It, yes, yeah, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Which is a shame. Um, take a look at the garrisons. If I go to our occupied territories, in the Soviet Union, how much are they putting in there? 167k. With civilian oversight, and how much is this going up per day? Not going up that badly. They must have put a collab government in. Yeah, not that good. Not that good. Still, that's something to bear in mind. Anyway, perhaps with uh, other players doing stuff, it could be a bit better. But let's begin all our offensives, uh, make sure all our troops are deployed. One. And I can't deploy those yet. Had how many tanks is that? A lot of tanks. That has a lot of tanks. A lot of tank destroyers. Um, let's make sure all our guys, if they're level five, we give them uh, a preferred tactic of mass assault. I don't think these guys will be level 5. And then... Um, begin. Target combat whip plus 50%. Yes. Also, how much uh, artillery do I have? 26k, so I can give these guys some artillery pieces. Yeah, have an artillery piece. It's slow. It's slow and steady, but it's going okay. Can I make your doctrine uh, as assault as well? So the tank rush down south will, should be enough to do a copious amount of damage we need.
So what does the Mass Assault do? Mass Assault gives you plus 50% combat width, basically meaning you can get twice the number of units in. So if you've got 240 whips, that basically halves their combat width to 220 whips. So 2, 4, 6, 8. <laughs> well, you can get a lot of tanks in with a Mass Assault Doctrine, I believe. At least that's what I, my fear is. I believe Mass Assault is potentially a, a very powerful weapon. But this is uh, this is done now. It's not even even something to be considered about anymore. Um, let's do this. Got the tanks who just push through. I'll upgrade any supply hubs I capture along the way. Any motorized they get, I'll dump off as well. Where's the motorized? Where'd I put my motorized? Over here. Let's add them to the tank lob. Uh, you may want to delete that order. You are supposed to uh, join this. You are. Take a look at the tanks. Oh, I've got no tanks in here. I haven't joined the battle. Yeah, this is completely, <laughs> completely broken. Roach build is, is disgusting. Although I'm running out of equipment rather quickly. I may have to start easing off on the advanced tank production. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because of the fucking <laughs> mass assault. Oh, it's over a bridge. That doesn't matter. Because I just, I just win by org. I would say it's a bit silly. I'm not even losing that much equipment each day, so I can just keep doing this over and over. Plus, everything else is collapsing elsewhere as well. <laughs> and I've got the, the the wider the line gets, the more powerful I become because I've got so many troops on every tile. This is silly. Um, let's do the mountain. I don't care. Just anything now. Am I running out of anything? 0 0.1, 0 0.2 heavy cannons. Oh no! However, I think my casualties will be very high doing this. But then again, it doesn't matter. I'm the Soviet Union. Nice. 
Let's keep upgrading these. Now we can just relax. So I run out of ammunition, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. It's so silly. I can just win the Org War now because of all the bonuses. Got an Org of 52. Uh, inherited a mantle of Lenin. What next? Um, you can do leader of the party and the people. And then we'll do a great commander. After. <laughs> I can just snake. This is so stupid. Because I've got so much manpower. <laughs> they can't stop this. So many divisions. And plus, because I'm constantly attacking them, a player wouldn't be able to counterattack because they'd be constantly pinned. First. Okay, I need some bit part of Germany before I can do the rush to Berlin. That's another unit encirclement. This is not going to be a lot an encirclement force, but it could be if I actually use my tanks properly. But uh, who's got time for that? I don't even know where my tanks are. Oh, Bulgaria's capitulated. Oh, here's a tank. How's this damage doing? Not bad. Bear in mind it has no supply. Okay, I've lost 5 million men, but uh, I'm not complaining. I'm starting to run out of uh, anti-air, so we'll have to begin uh, anti-air production. What else am I running out of? Running out of 1k guns a day, which isn't bad. So let me get rid of 10k guns. There we are. Leader the party and the people. Can I do this yet? What does it actually give me? <laughs> oh boy. Um... Oh boy. Just make the front longer. Oh, I've run out of road of life. That's not good. That's not good. Oh, 
Uh, what other focuses should I do? What will this give me? Yeah, let's do this. Why not? That's it. Then these guys marching to Berlin. Uh, what does this give me? That gives me garbage. Death to the invaders. That gives me garbage. Let's go with what a motherland for that extra breakthrough. And I probably should do victories near after. Okay, I'm running out of anti-air. Still, but the fact is I've been just on the offensive since 1943. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, there's no majors, so I can't rush to Berlin. There's no majors in German territory yet. But they're getting there. How did Warsaw get liberated? Oh, because I'm over. Because <laughs> I took it, that's why. That's okay. You'll win now, but later you won't. You can't cover the entire line. Woe to any Germany player that does not have a lot of divisions. <laughs> or good divisions. Just woe. But woe be to them. Keep expanding. I haven't stopped the offensive once. I can't afford. I can't afford to change that now. I can't afford it. I'd uh, I'd go bankrupt. I'm already starting to run out of uh, anti-tank guns, but everything else is fine. So well, concentrated industry does seem to be uh, really powerful for the Soviets. Yeah, let's look at our supply lines. How can we fix the uh, supply? Let's upgrade you. Let's upgrade you. That should be us done. Let's liberate Copenhagen. Because I can get double the number of divisions in than they, than they can, just by using the mass assault. If mass assault worked for um, the tanks as well, that has got broken. That's broken because I can have double the tanks in a battle at once. So I can have double the anti-tank and double the piercing. 
I, I can see this being broken. Thank you, Hungary. Like, I've lost 6.8 million men, but... I, when, I, don't, I can't even remember when I started the offensive. Like, I started the offensive, what? The start of 1943, and I haven't pressed a stop button yet. And I don't have to. Oh, now my Italy's running out, so now I probably have to. Yeah, we're getting all this way. And then having to stop is sanity. And I can't do any of offensives now because <laughs> it almost gimps you trying to <laughs> if you don't get pushed back enough because of uh, you don't get the bonus attack uh, operations. There's no supply hubs here. Oh, there's a supply hub there. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven divisions in. Just a basic attack under Zukov, I think. There you go, mass charge. Let's pause that. Attack fix combat width plus 50%. Attacker da tactic counter damage plus 10. Defender tactic counter damage plus 10. But at combat width plus 50. Ugh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. 9 divisions. And that's 40 width. And these are. What are these? 19. They're 20 width. And, I'm on a, and this is on a mountain. And that's a combat with 75. Uh, but I'm attacking on multiple tiles, so I, I can't really accurately work it out. That's a shame. That's a shame. Still 9.75, but nah, I can't work it out. That's too much mass for me. The vac is gone. The French are gone. Everyone's gone. And that's that done. Uh, Germany. I'm going to take this. This, 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 this. I'm just going to take everything. Well, as much of everything I can take. Why is that so expensive? I don't want to know. Alright, let's start attacking Germany. We are. Thank you, Denmark. And there 
we have it. Uh, let's pop it early now, I suppose. Uh, let's pop it the rest of uh, rest of you. And then Italy, pop it. There we are. And I believe I'm done. So let's take all the troops we have. Take them all together. Put them all into one group. So by the end of the game, I had 600 divisions. 600 divisions at the end of the game. That is disgusting. Like, nothing is breaking that. And I could have had more as well. That's how bad this, <laughs> this is, how painful this whole thing was. And that mass assault was nice. I like that mass assault, so. I just think that's a really fun, fun build to do in multiplayer because even though you might lose, you're just going to know the other side is going to hate every second of it. So, let's do a recap about the Roach build. Generally, uh, it's a passive build uh, and really only used for defense or as an insult to the enemy if it's a meme game. Um, it's good for psychologically, uh, how do I put it, dominating your opponent because uh, that any player who comes across a Roach build will immediately begin to hate life. And um, it's also um, very good at buying time uh, for allies. The negatives are, of course, that um, you're very passive and you can't apply pressure and um, for more experienced players and more experienced Germanys they'll understand how to counteract it by maximizing soft attack and things like that. Um, I will say this build you'd have to land least air, you uh, have quite a lot of air from the allies and probably a bit more guns however um, that shouldn't really prove too much of a problem uh, with an air USA unless of course you need to build air and you probably can get over building some air yourself if you really want to um all together templates i already add one artillery piece towards the end just to get that 222 soft attack but that 52 org and that 19 combat width is lovely because of the combat width bonuses of the doctrine um the tanks although they're pretty hot garbage they're still good at piercing they still still got some okay org and that mass assault bonus I think means that I can bring twice the number of tanks into a single battle compared to other players, which means, of course, I can. Um, you can probably out DPS enemy armor. I mean, that piercing having 86, you could probably boost that some more. And if you're really desperate, I could always immediately switch down to deep battle with the rest of my points. Um, so, in order of focuses, what I recommend if you're going to do a roach build is the path of Marxism Leninism, followed by the agit pro prop, well, pro followed by this, followed by the agit prop, and then popping that railroad um, decision, and focusing the rest on rushing down the purges. It's all of these until you can't yet because of a soft time limit. Until the soft time limit. And then switching to heavy industry and infrastructure effort. And then switching back to purge and switching back over there when possible to get to foreign experts. And then these civs and then this research slot. And then waiting on the third five year plan. So after you get this and you've finished off all the purges. So really it goes agit prop purges when you can't do purges for a while. Civilian economy when you can't do civilian economy. Wrong. Civilian economy check purges. If you can do purges, if not, go back to civilian economy. I check purges again until you get purges done, so on and so forth. Um, once you've got that and you've got all the way down to that research slot, switch over and start just focusing on military engineer. Uh, well, actually, start switching and focusing on uh, collectors propaganda, socialist emulation, and socialist realism to get that minus two percent um, 
consumer goods. And then once you're done here, you can also go for this fellow as well. Switch over. Focus on uh, um, move industry to your rules and that extra reset slot. Um, and then once that's done, you can uh, uh, finally go and, and do the, the third five year plan and start focusing on this. Then with your last few focuses before the war starts, focus on the, uh, the military. So really your priority is agitprop, that yield, that yield bonus, then purges, and then when you can't do purges, the villain economy, well the economy focuses, when you can't do economy, well, while checking the purges after every focus, so purges are your main priority after agitprop, once all the purges are gone, over here, to get rid of to get that two percent consumer goods and that stability, and then back, uh, you skip that one, don't do that one, but go down to there and do new Soviet woman after you're done there. Um, rush down here, or vice versa, really, you can do this first and then that minus two percent consumer goods, which probably actually makes more sense. So, probably want to do purges, then this. Then finally socialist realism, so you want to go back and forth, but really you can pick and choose what you want, whether you want to do this one first or down to there first. The only thing you need to do is avoid doing the third five year plan until you are ready to start mass producing your equipment and you've got no more time left. Because that is what was stopping me getting my 300 mils by or 290 mils by uh, or two, 290 factories by war start. Uh, in any case, um, that was it really. Really all, all, all my recommendations is, you know, the focus is agitprop, focus on purges, when you can't do purges, the economy, when once you've done a few economies, keep checking purges, then continue economy until once purges are gone, then do the um, Soviet realism, then do this focus, and then the last things you should be doing is your military ones. And this will allow you to get 300 factories, but you've got nowhere, so bear that in mind. In any case, very interesting game. Uh, production, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I started with hot garbage until I've got so many units that I can up and I've got so much spare equipment I can upgrade it. Um, so I had loads of hot garbage and then I upgraded. Um, I don't actually need these really. I could that's a, that's three mils I didn't need. Um, and then of course advanced heavy tanks with the advanced cannons and um, piercing. So I'll be able to pierce any enemy tanks and. Because of the mass assault, I'm hoping that I will get twice the number of tanks in compared to the enemy. And because I've because concentrated industry is so powerful, it's just so dirty in this uh, in this. It's um, you'll be you'll be fine. Like you can really drag out a Soviet war now uh, and make it unbearable for other players. Um, in other words, that's it. That's all I have for you. Just the joys of a roach build. Um, and uh, just make sure that if you do do a roach build, uh, expect uh, rage quits, uh, people to give up halfway, uh, the allies to throw the towel in, or um, expect to change your production after you get that advanced cannon. Uh, or once you're uh, once you're ready to change production, once you've got so many units out, you just don't know what to do with them. In any case, um, that's me for the day, boys and girls. I've got work tomorrow and I'll be away next week. We'll be back for a few days the week after, but then I'm gone again. Christmas, and I'll see you boys at a later date. Anyway, if you have any questions about the roach build, uh, the joys of roaches, uh, all things like that, just feel free to give me a shout. But until then, we'll call it a day, and uh, adieu.